and change the weight of the little wheel to say 10,000 and the big wheels as well. Now collide the wheels with these slider poles. Whoops. Position it nicely in the middle there. So you can see that's nice. Um, these things aren't really perfectly in proportion so you can make everything look better by not making the wheels so big on the arms and so on but it will work. That's the whole point and purpose of this thing. Now smart constraint just these two big wheels and the rails and then you can release the small wheel and now we're going to pull the throwing arm up to the top and attach winches because it's a nightmare to try and get this thing up every time with the um, physics gun yeah there and we just winch this to where it is about there. See. And you can see I've attached a few winches. I think that was about 10 on each side. The increase speed is as high as it can go because you don't want to slow it down. And the decrease speed is set to about 400 because otherwise the arm goes flying off the top there. Now I'm going to no collide these two wheels on the arm with these two big wheels so they don't collide when it tries to run over them so again no collide multi and those now I'm going to test it and then show you guys exactly how it works and how much further it throws in the normal trebuchet now I just want to show you a problem that I have with this is that because these counterweights aren't almost touching the rails over here you can see it can move side to side quite a bit um, when you build your floating arm trebuchet just find something that makes the um, two weights almost touch the poles so it goes down very smoothly and very accurately and then I've set the weights lower so it doesn't throw as harshly so you can see it go so you can see it does that here is that little wooden wall trebuchet that I made uh, floating arm trebuchet because I already showed you guys the basics of the floating arm trebuchet so I'll just explain everything from this one from now on because it throws very well. You can see I have the two counterweights, the pole that holds the counterweights, the arm, and here's the expression chip and the button to grab it. Here's a little guiding wheel thing and guiding rails to make sure the arm goes up smoothly. Now note that these um, weights almost touch the sides so the arm doesn't sway side to side very much so I wind it up and you can see that I've attached a winch to the front of the grabber and to that plank over there so it pulls the grabber straight as well and I've attached winches from here to there so it makes sure the arm goes over that way and not fall around that way and I'm going to release it and you'll see how it works now watch the arm action it's going to go forwards and backwards and very fast over I'll go to camera view so you could see 
how the arm worked and then I'll show you why it's much better than the normal trebuchets with where the arm is just held still over there. Um, do you see that I have lifted the counterweight which would have been normally only to about here I've lifted it up almost double as high but I haven't increased the arm double the size to account for it all it does is just falls down pushes the arm backwards and then pulls it in really fast I'm going to do that in slow motion so you can see it better okay here we go you can see the arm going down, the arm being guided by that thing it falls onto the rails and gets pulled forward and yeah that's how it works now I'll also attach speedometers to the key tips so you can see the speed of these I just want you guys to know that um, I'll go to the weight tool to prove it the weight of these are actually less than the weight of the trebuchet we used to throw the pumpkin with you can see it's only 8,000 not 11,000 and still it throws much further than the normal trebuchet now here's the speedometers again the top one is the counterweight the middle one is at the tip of the arm and the bottom one is the tip of the sling so I'll just release the sling and you'll see the speed I've also attached some trails so you can see the distance and the way the arm travels so here it goes you can see the um, it's not much difference now but wait till it gets to the top spin or uh, well, top swing that reaches 3000 and the counterweight only reached about 300 and you can see it's almost an elliptical form that it travels at and because we want to throw forward it's much better than it going in a perfect circle because it actually throws it more forward now I'm going to throw a pumpkin so you can see how far it throws okay what I've done is I've added a speedometer to the pumpkin instead of the um, grabber so you can see the speed of the pumpkin and I'm going to release it now and there it goes so watch the speed of the pumpkin so it left it at about 2200 and you can see what a nice drawing it made and that's just gonna keep on till the end of this movie which I'm not going to record and it will probably reach halfway across the map and there's a floating arm trebuchet if y you should really try and experiment with stuff, figure it out um, like figure the best weights out best uh, like distances and figure out uh, the different lengths, what lengths throw better and so on uh, this is just the basics of how it works and how to, um, how to build a basic frame of one